Okay, so what makes this a good touring bike? Commuting bike and maybe around the world, bikepacking bike. I'm going to show you. Well, hello. In this video, um, I'm going to be uh, talking through why this 1995 Hardtail Marin Bobcat makes a good touring, commuting, around the world, bike packing, gravel bike, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to talk about the Brill Tech, what's already on this bike, which I just think, I don't understand why we've progressed, we call it progression, to this tech that we use nowadays. I'm going to show you what I love about the stuff we've got on here already. Uh, the plans for the bike, because the plan is that I'm going to uh, change this into a drop bar off-road touring bike, gravel bike, bike packing bike for my brother. I'm going to show you the items that I'm going to keep on it. I'm going to show you the items that I'm going to change. I'm going to show you the items that I'm going to have to buy. Um, and then in this video, I'm going to strip this down ready for uh, powder coating. Um, my brother wants this black. Um, so I'll be taking off the brakes, the headset, the stem, the bars. Um, I'll be taking off the, uh, the crank, uh, the derailers, um, and I'll be showing you how to get the crown race off the Fox. Um, so that's the video for today. 26 inch wheels to start off with. Strong, and you can find them all over the world. And lots of uh, tire choices, although getting a bit less because you know, the fads for 27.5, 29 and all that. When I say they are strong and reliable, just take a look, there we are in focus. Just when I say they are strong and reliable, just take a look how close that brake block is. And I'm gonna go slowly through it. That rim is not even moving. Absolutely perfect. Perfect and true. Reason number two, it has mounts for racks and mud guards on the rear. And you can also put mud guards on the front. Reason number three why this makes an absolutely brilliant touring, commuting, around the world bike. Easy to service brakes and these cantilever brakes, they work fine. Stop you no problem. If you did want a heftier brake on the rear or at the back, you can, which will go into these bosses, get hydraulic rim brakes and they will provide crazy stopping power. The next reason, can't really see it there, square taper bo bottom brackets. So this bottom bracket, it's the original bottom bracket that was fitted to this bike. Bottom bracket is 25 years old and there is nothing wrong with it that will keep on going for quite a while longer yet. Absolutely amazing. This headset, as we can see, original and still smooth, smooth as anything. So if I was keeping this bike as is, and it was going to be a touring bike, commuting bike, around the world bike, the only thing I would do is take off the twist shifters, these index shifters or any form of index shifting, and I would just have some nice friction thumb shifters on top there, on the tops of these bars, and then it would just be bomb proof. It would just be bomb proof. And it's a light bike. It's probably one of the lightest bikes in the stable, and it's the oldest bike in the stable. Okay, next thing, the Brill Tech on this old 1995 Marin Bobcat. Um, basically, I think I've covered most of it with the description of why it would be a good a good touring bike. But just just to recap, 
the amazing bottom bracket. Absolutely stunning. Square taper bottom brackets. Again, don't know why we've we uh, we've gone to these cheaper ideas that just break and don't last. Square taper, nice and sealed. Bearings last quite a while. Solid wheels, 26 inch. They are running smooth as anything. And then, like I say, easy to service brakes, shifters. Now, don't get me wrong, I do love disc brakes as well. For the purpose of touring, commuting, these brakes are just, are just fine. And another thing that I love, eight speed and nine speed, you can see how thick this chain is. They last a lot longer. They last a lot longer because that hub body is the same size of a 10 speed, 11 speed. So basically the gears have had to get thinner. The chains had to get thinner to fit it in that space there. Okay, the plan for the bike. It's going to be stripped. It's going to be powder coated black and it's going to be changed into a drop bar one by 11. If you saw my other video on the specialized rock hopper, I was a bit gutted about having to change the color on that because it's, you know, classic. You remember, I remember it was one of the first bikes I had as a kid. Um, and I really didn't want to change the color scheme on that, but I had to do a lot of damage to get the seat post out and uh, it needed powder coating. This, the seat post is fine. This comes out no problem at all. My brother's having this though, and he wants it black and it is just a gray color. So it's not getting changed that much. The only iconic thing about this Marin is the fact that they did bring them out with different colored forks and the forks matched the stem, matched the bottle cage, matched the seat pin. And they did it with various models where they followed that sort of um, style. So that's sort of like the iconic thing about this Marin. Um, but when it's all black, drop bars on, black uh, bits and bobs, it's gonna look really, really good. Finally, this is gonna have a one by 11 and the front chain ring is gonna be something like a 34T and we're gonna have an 11 to 42, 46 cassette at the back. Uh, my brother does have some stuff that he can put onto here. He said he wants to use his handlebars to save a little bit of money. To fit the drop bars on this bike, I have this uh, stem adapter. So that'll just sit in there. And then this is a normal stem, which will be able to fit modern sized bars. And then we've got the uh, slight quill stem bottom bit there, just using that adapter. So on this build, what am I going to keep? Obviously I'm gonna keep the frame and the forks. They're gonna be powder coated black, keeping the wheels. The brakes are black already, so we're gonna keep those. Once I've stripped down the headset, just make sure it is fine, it seems fine. There didn't seem to be any problems with it at all but strip it down, just check and make sure they are. If they are, I'll keep that headset. If not, just buy a black one, about six pound, not a problem. Um, we will need to buy an 11 speed chain, need to buy an 11 speed rear mech and an 11 speed 11 to 46 cassette. Uh, along with that, we are going to have um, some bar end friction shifters, so we'll need to buy those as well. Bar tape, cables, um, bits and bobs. Uh, with the crank, I'm gonna see if I can, either on the middle or on the outer, get a narrow wide chain ring, and then we can use this crank as the one by. If not, it'll just be a case of a new bottom bracket and one by crank in black. But uh, just changing the chain ring will be a cheaper way. So pricing it up, 
uh, coming out at about 200 200 pound to um to do this could be a little bit more if we need to buy the new crank because he wants this all matching he wants it all nice and black um he's got a saddle so we will just need a black seat post as well shouldn't take too long the only thing that's going to delay this build and delay videos for you is if my brother don't pay up on time so i'm going to send him a copy of this video and hopefully it'll prompt him to keep on sending the the wonga step one five mil allen key and i'm just going to remove the front and the rear brakes just um, un unbolting those there i've taken the wheels off and i've removed the brakes front and back uh, the calipers and now i'm just going to remove the uh, seat pin the saddle and the bottle cage and the rear rack and that's just again allen key bolts nothing um, to worry about there by the way if you're wondering what uh, rack this is this is a tortec um, and it's a uh, it's a really light it's a lovely bit of kit is this tortec uh, really impressed so next i'm going to remove the handlebars and it is just an allen key at the top just in there just unscrew that and then the handlebars should come off as we can see these cables are no good uh, they've split and I would have put new cables on anyway. They're not expensive three four pound So I'm just going to cut the cables there and then the handlebars will be free uh, I'm just going to unscrew that and take that off there. That's the cable guide for the brakes Now if my brother doesn't mind having a chrome one fitted to his all black uh, Frame then we can just use this if not I can just get a black one of those and those are about six pound Okay, so if you want to know how these headsets work, all they are is you've got a, th a thread on the forks and this, this bottom nut here screws down onto the, onto the fork and just to stop it coming loose, we have this lock ring at the top. So you add the compression by tightening that to the required tightness and then this just goes on top and tightens up against that nut and you can sort of like backwards tighten that and tighten that but at the same time backwards tighten that don't make sense does it slacken that one off slightly as you're tightening this one down just so you don't compress the bearings too much but it's a very very simple uh, system just tight tightening ring and then this is just the the lock ring so I'm just going to take those off now just by unscrewing this top one first and then unscrewing the bottom one. When this is unscrewed, when this is unscrewed, the fork should just fall out. So make sure you keep hold of it. And that's just a washer in between the two nuts that just fell on the floor okay so these are the bits that have been removed so we have the bearings there and then we've got bearings inside there this is the bit that's threaded and screws onto the fork when it's gone through like so those bearings there sit in that cup so that gets screwed on there I'm just showing you how it gets built up then this washer would go on and then this bit would screw on the top to make sure that this doesn't come loose but we, we do have two bits that we need to remove we need to remove this uh, cup here 
and this one here. These are pressed into the frame, so I'm going to show you how we can remove those. There's also something else that we need to remove before it dropped it again, the washer. There's also something else we need to remove before we can send this off to, um, to get powder coated because we don't want this to get powder coated on the fork, otherwise we will have some problems trying to remove it. And if you buy a new headset, you will get one of these with it anyway. And I think I'm going to buy a new headset just just to be on the safe side. Just you know, we're stripping it down completely, so we might as well make sure that it's got you know newer bits on. And the bit that we need to remove is this bit here. This is called the crown race, and this is where the bearings rotate around here. The, those lower bearings. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can remove this because sometimes they can be a bit tricky. Okay, disclaimer for this next bit. Um, there is a proper tool for this, and I'll show you it how it will work in a, in a bit. This method I'm going to show you, please make sure if you are going to do it, you are aware that it's not the proper way, and that you are wearing gloves and maybe some eye protection. Um, I don't want you trying to take me to Judge Judy saying that this dumbass on YouTube uh, did this this way, so I just copied him. Um, Take your own safety into your own hands and judge if you want to do it this way or buy the proper tool for it. Okay, so the uh, crown race, it's just pushed on to the, uh, to the fork steerer and it's a very, very fine, fine tolerance. It's, it's pushed on there really tight. So what I do to get it started, notice I'm on a chopping board so my girlfriend doesn't kick my ass when she gets back, is I use a Stanley blade. And I place a Stanley blade just where the gap is and I give it a few taps. Now this is why I'm saying make sure if you are using this method you're wearing gloves and eye protection and make sure you never twist the blade. This blade is very brittle and it'll just shatter and snap. And just a few taps on there and it will get it started. And then what you can do is you can get a screwdriver in there then and whack it. Remember, use an old screwdriver, not one of your uh, favorite ones that you use for actually screwing stuff in, one that you've decided that's going to be used as a chisel. And then I keep my arm on the fork and it's a case of just tapping. As you go around, you'll need to keep on turning it around. And for those people that are wondering, this is the same for modern forks as well. This isn't a primitive thing that we're doing here on 90s bikes, 80s bikes. This is how it's uh, still done. And I'm really sorry if you couldn't see that, but it's just popped off nicely. There we go. That's the crown race. So that's part of the headset. If you were to buy a new headset, you get a new one of these. To, uh, to fit onto your forks. And you can see here, this is the tolerance that uh, we're dealing with. And when you get a new one, it just bangs on. And there's special tools to bang them on, which I'll show you in another video. Okay, for knocking these out, there is a special tool. Uh, I can't seem to find mine. But what it will look is it'll look something similar to that, except it splays out at the bottom and then you can push those in and push them in there and then basically just expands and then it just hits these out at the right time. I'm afraid I'm gonna use the screwdriver method because I haven't, I can't seem to find my tool. And all we do, knock it out. 
I'm going to flip the frame and do the other side. Okay, so that's both the cups out now. It didn't do any damage to them hitting them with a the screwdriver. They weren't pushed in that hard, but if this was, I'm not keeping these because like I say, I'm just going to replace this headset. But if this was something I was going to be keeping, I wouldn't uh, be hitting it with a hammer and a screwdriver. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just get the camera and I'll show you what it looks like down there. And uh, the next thing is just getting rid of that and then we're ready to rock and roll. So that's the head tube. You can see it's a very tidy frame. Hard, you know, there's just a few little marks, but uh, the frame is in immaculate condition. Once it's powder coated, it's going to look spot on. So the next step, I'm going to split the chain, take the chain off, take the rear mech off and the front mech. That will then leave us with the crank and I can show you how we use a crank puller to get that out and then show you how we get out the um, square taper bottom bracket. Let's do that now. So if you've uh, never split a chain before, this is mine. It's part of a multi-tool. So this is what I carry around with me all the time. That's the chain splitting part. So the chain just sits in there and that pushes the pin out. You just need an Allen key for the back of that. The, you just use the other part of the, uh, of the multi-tool or another Allen key if you have one. Um, so I'm just going to split this chain now and I'll probably do a close-up and show you how that works as well. So here's the multi, uh, sorry, not the multi-tool, the chain, chain splitter attached. And all I'm going to do is tighten this and it'll push the pin out through that side. Now it will make, you'll have to put a bit of force on it and it will, you will feel like you've broken something, it will crack and that's just the, uh, the pin just being pushed through. Um, and if you are going to reuse this chain, if you're on the trail, make sure that you don't push the pin out all the way, otherwise you won't be able to get it back in. And I'll show you what I mean by that now. This one actually pushed out quite easy. So what I do is I push it through until I think it's okay, through enough so I can wiggle the chain out without pushing the pin all the way on the other side. So I'll show you that now. So you can see there the pin is still in and it means that if I needed to rejoin this chain, I could just put my tool the other way around and push that pin back through. Whereas if that pin comes all the way out, you're a bit um, up the creek without a paddle. And you'll have to take another couple of links out and stuff like that. So just thread in the, the chain out. And it is now just another Allen key job to remove these. Remove the rear mech, that's off. Cable's been cut so it'll pull through. Drop that down there. Allen key bolt for the front mech. Same size as the rear in this case. Okay, so this is a square taper crank and bottom bracket. When, you, when I remove this, you'll see why they call it a square taper. And I'm not joking, I absolutely love how simple these are. I love how they work. I love how you could get yourself sorted out if you are stuck in the middle of nowhere. They just work, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, really really struggling to find out why we've we've changed you know unless you're a mad uh, racer and you want to save grams then albeit but this is just such a brilliant system such a brilliant tech so first off i'm going to unscrew 
this um, Allen bolt here. I believe they have the right size. That's it there. So I'm going to unscrew that and then I'll show you the next stage. Okay, so that's that nut out of there now. Now you can see um, that all this crank, oops, sorry, all this crank is, is just pushed onto this square taper and I'll show you once I get it off. But what you'll probably remember, you might remember as kids, if you were trying to remove these as a kid, you probably got a hammer on the other side and braid the hell out of it and bent all your chain rings, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the proper way of doing it is with a crank pulling tool. And all, hap all we do here is we screw this bit into the crank. And try to do this one-handed, so I apologize. So we just screw that bit into the crank. And then we just tighten this up here. And this middle bit is pushing on the square tapered part of the bottom bracket. This bit's staying stationary, so it just pops it off. It's so simple, so amazing. So, so simple. And then just unscrew your tool. That's the crank off. Unbelievable. I love this old tech. Should never change. So this is why it's called a square taper. Now, as you can see, it's square and it tapers. And all that crank is, is just pushes onto there. It's a nice tight fit. I'm just gonna do the same on the other side. Just the Allen bolt, first of all. And once we've done that, just put in our crank puller tool into the crank arm. And then there will be a bit of resistance at first as you push it round, but it's nothing too hard. There we go. And then actually do the remainder with your finger and that's the other one off. Now I wish you could feel how light, how light this is. It's like, it's like paper. Okay guys, I'm just left with uh, three things to remove. This uh, square taper bottom bracket here using this tool on both sides. So the three things left to remove this side, the other side, and then just this screw cable guide, and this frame is then ready to be powder coated. So this wasn't um, tight at all, and one thing you might notice as I'm actually removing this is it's opposite thread. So you can see that normally this would be tightening something, but going clockwise in this case is, uh, that's my tool that's just dropped. He's tightening it up. So that's that side removed and I'll just do the other side. So this is a square taper bottom bracket and um, I'm just going to come round and see what you can see. <laughs> I'm doing this on a mobile phone. So there we go, square taper bottom bracket. This cup goes on the non-drive side, this goes in the drive side. Um, I'm just going to wipe it up, just so you can see how spectacular these bottom brackets are. So that was how it just came out of the bike, so it's just a bit grubby. Okay, so there we have it in all its glory. Um, like I say, I don't know why we've gone away and we, we just keep on making things worse and worse and worse with every bit of <laughs> what we think is improvement. That is sealed. Them bearings last ages. This was in there from you, 26 years old and still fine, no issues. Um, but because we've stripped it down, 
Um, going to put a nice uh, new one in there for my brother and um, jobs are good and so there we have it guys one frame one fork ready for powder coating I might just take this tape off um, but yeah that's it it's done now hopefully um, my brother is going to send me some cash my way and I can get this uh, build moving on quite quickly and then you can see um, the transformation if you want to um, follow us then please do now look I'm just going to grab the camera if I just show you the state of the kitchen my girlfriend's going to be home in about half an hour an hour and I need to make sure that all these bike parts boxes are uh, put away so please if you want to follow this build like and subscribe and uh, yeah I'll see you see you soon thank you very much